Hey you guys, hello women and men, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer and today we're gonna talk about how, uh, why inner work is important again. Um, what it does for your life, how you benefit your whole life by doing this inner work, you know? Because sometimes we need a little refresher for why we're doing what we're doing. You know, a little more encouragement in this area. Welcome, it's a sunny day in California. Um, that's where I am. And what I say is I'm a psychologist in my day job, but what I do is I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening. Uh, and all of life is a spiritual awakening. And if you think of it like J.R.R. Tolkien, you know, this man knew 50 languages fluently, like 50. You, you can't even imagine like how deep that goes. And yet, you know, for him, I read in some of his letters that he wrote to his son when his son was in a war of some kind, that or some difficulty that he goes to mass every day. And to go into mass, you know, don't worry about whatever your religion is, come here and I welcome all people because all of us are created by the divine love. But to go into mass, if you wanna understand it on an intellectual and a spiritual level, is to choose to enter into a place that that goes between both realms the heavens and the earth and so um let's be present for a second first like i love looking at the wind blowing through trees leaves because it's like how we're animated so let's go to this tree. So, um, and Tolkien loved trees, right? I didn't know I was going to talk about Tolkien, but he was a man who, um, I visited his house in Oxford. I walked to it and then I walked to the pub that him and C.S. Lewis would always go to and I had a beer, <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to trigger anyone. Um, I think it was a cider. Um, so just like the trees are reaching up into the heavens, you know, and they have roots down in the earth, you have um, your intellect and you are a soul in a physical body. And so um, it's about learning how to feed both of these and learning how to be aware of both of these and learning how and like your physical body, you know, um, it doesn't, it doesn't look the same and I better be in the sun or whatever. Um, but whatever is, is to exercise your physical body, like brings oxygen and blood all through, you know, like it gets everything going so that your body detoxes what you don't need. Uh, when you, uh, exercise your intellect, and not just your intellect, but the more you know yourself as a being, as who you were before you were given a name, you know? Even if they named you in the womb, it's like your parents, you know? It's like, imagine if you didn't know your name yet and you're here, you know? Or imagine when you're two and you meet someone, or four, and you meet someone at the playground and you're like, let's play, you know? And it doesn't matter what their name is. I mean, sometimes we're trained to ask, what's your name? But it's just another person, another being that you love. This is what I wanted so much. This is what was con conveying to my heart, right? So um, is when you learn how to get quiet and detach from the outer world and take some time away from social media or from TV or um, from excessive of anything, it says, be sober in all things as you learn how to detach from things and not let things control you. I heard a beautiful man that I love. He said, um, and, and that's a way new thing, you know, for me to, to just have all this reverence and love for a bunch of men in my life. You can know that that has healed a bunch, a lot of things. I mean, I had love for Elliot, but you know, he had his faults too. We all do. But anyway, this man said, um, <laughs> to the extent that you're attached to one of your passions, you know, where you have to have it, that's the extent that you'll step on someone else to get that thing. And so you can say, oh, I love you. I, 
you know, I love this person. I would never, I'm just going to sit on the grass. I would never hurt you. And yet, um, um, the extent that you are attached to this other thing is to the extent that you'll step over that person when it comes down to it. You know, that's why there's this saying, the wise man builds his house upon the rock because the foolish one builds it on sand. When you build, when you build your life on sand, on stuff that's not real, that's illusory, when the storms come, you know, when the temptations come, when the difficulties come in life, when the excuses have the possibility of arising, you know, your house crumbles because you're used to just going for the lesser thing and not for the greater thing. It's so quiet. Consider yourself like so amazingly blessed that this video came across your path. And I don't mean that in any egotistical way. It's like, I feel so, I feel the, the, the fortune, the, the, like what you're getting right now is worth more than a billion dollars. Like I can tell you this because I know it's worth it in my life. I have kids and my kids are always like, would you rather have a billion dollars or do this? And I'm like, uh, do this, you know what I mean? This, this good thing, you know, have this good thing, this, this heartwarming experience, this experience that enlightened me, that's gonna help me love other people for the rest of my life in a better way, in a more powerful way, in a more um, kind way, so I don't hurt other people, you know? I know, I know deeply what it feels like to be hurt by others, and I never wanna do that to other people. And so, I, you know, I just find that what I end up teaching is always teaching us how to rise above that and how to be truly loving people, not just fake, but really authentic. So what I noticed the other day, because my mind was quiet, was, uh, and I, I might have mentioned this in, in, the, in the last video briefly, is that, you know, I had, I had, someone was coming to help me clean my house and I love her so much. And I had all this, all these clothes on my floor and I had just done both my kids laundry and my own laundry, but I hadn't put it away. But this was other clothes from like a trip I had been on or whatever. And so they're on the floor. And so notice this in your own life. And, and, and I don't do shoulds on myself. And I, I notice if I'm talking mean to myself, but I notice myself, give myself this look like what? Like, like, like I murdered a village or something. This is, this is, a simile. I don't know if that's going to be a, a trigger word on, you know, any of these social platforms, but I need to say like, that's the look I had. They call it in psychology, they call it murderous rage, you know? And so it's just from fear. It's just from fear. And so what happened was, as I've said in some of the other videos is like, you know, my dad was raised by my grandfather. That's his father. And when I was four, my sister was being born and like I was afraid of the dark and he spanked me really, really hard, which goes beyond your physical boundaries. You know, you're, it, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't a, a loving discipline. It was um, a reaction, you know, it was a reaction to some kind of anger he had, maybe let's say towards the depression or um, the great depression. And I won't talk about all of that. We don't have time. I only have a few more minutes, but all that to say is I know that if he spanked me that way, he spanked my father that way. And my father learned you better be perfect or you're going to get demolished. You're going to get crushed physically. You're going to get beaten down, you know? And so you learn to be a pleaser. There's that whole fight, flight, freeze, or please, right? They've added please. And it's really good to understand why you please people and why you please yourself. This is why we go off to our addictions and the things that we go to. And it's like, I have to please myself because you're in a primal state. You're in this child. Here's the child. Here's the adult. Here's the child. Here's the adult. The adult looks like this giant that's going to crush us. And the child learns to either fight back or freeze and just be immobile and be immobile in their lives and not make decisions and good choices and stuff. Fight, flight, or run away. You run away to your addictions or you can please yourself or try to please others. 
um, you know, by giving them what they're asking for in the moment, which is not what's best for them or for you, you know? If I'm going through a difficult time and I ask you to just get me a 12 pack of beer, you know, I'm never going to learn how to deal with that problem that just came up. And I'm never going to learn how to grow stronger in that area. And I'm never going to, um, like, look at the clouds. There's the sun, but the clouds are over here. It's just so, keep bringing yourself back to presence. You robbed me. I robbed myself as I accepted that gift from you. I robbed myself from actually growing stronger to be able to deal with life's ups and downs that come to me and to be able to, be able to sit through the discomfort of that, the pain of that, the um, I don't like this, but I'm gonna get through to the other side. And now, so, as I noticed that horrible look like I started laughing once I noticed it because awareness, awareness just brings you back into joy. Awareness is like the beginning of the end of all of this stuff. So just know, I love how Eckhart Tolle, he said, in awareness, you can't be in egotism. And so that's why I could laugh and I could be like, uh, there's no way, like I'm not gonna be that angry at myself for this pile of clothes that's on the floor. It doesn't matter if it's been there for two weeks. I'm gonna choose to love this person and be loving and and not reject her. And, um, and now, so that's just a pile of clothes. But it also made me think of, wow, the people that were around me, some people that might have been afraid to be close to me, like maybe they picked up on, you know, I internalized my father and my mother and my dad like had to have quote had to he didn't have to but he thought he had to have this part of himself that would look at me because i experienced it as a child and look at himself with murderous rage to get things done to get things you better get up and get all this stuff perfect and you can't there's no way you can do everything perfect like there's too many areas in our lives that we would have to get perfect at once so we can't and so, you know, some people, that's what I was gonna say, okay? So I was seeing this all, it all came intuitively, like flashes of light, like downloads. Like when you finally get a math equation and you're like, ah, oh, I get it. Or I loved, I took honors chemistry, you know, I loved chemistry. So when you get what that one chemical goes with this other one and how they bond and stuff, it's just like, it all click, 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 click. It goes into place. now. I don't have time to go into all of it, but in in the end of, um, oh shoot, Luke, Luke, St. Luke, one of the saints. Oh, well, he was a, a doctor. He was a doctor actually. And he interviewed Mary and interviewed all the disciples. I think he was one of the 70, not one of the 12 though. But anyway, I, I of course I welcome all religions, but look at Christ as like this master teacher. If you'll at least look at him as that, you know? And so, always he manifested what he needed to manifest to teach what he was teaching. And I'll connect this to what was just going on. And so it says they were going towards this boat and he said, let us, let us go here, get in this boat. Let's, let us go to the other side of this lake. That's what he says. And I mean, I just started bawling because my heart's really sensitive when I was in this place, someone else was reading it to me. Um, because I had had a vision three years ago, three years ago, where um, this camp song came up to me, where it was like, running bear, loves little white dove with a love as big as the sky. Oh, I, no wonder I kept looking at the sky. I forgot about that. I was like, the sky is like so beautiful right now. And so running bear had this love as big as the sky, you know, uh, with a love that couldn't die. And little white dove had the same, but they had warring tribes and they were on two different islands and they both had to go in the water to find each other. And in the song, of course, they die in each other's arms, you know? Um, but it's like, it's, it's like a picture of ego death. And like what I was talking about, Tolkien takes you through the whole Lord of the Rings. It's showing you, he's, navi he's helping you navigate through your spiritual awakening because the Lord of the Rings shows you how to die honorably to yourself. Uh, for a higher cause, you know, Frodo had a higher cause, 
which ended up saving all of the Shire, all of the whole Middle Earth, all of the different races of, of men and peoples and dwarfs and elves and everybody. And it brought everybody together. And there was a greater higher purpose that Frodo couldn't always see. He was just seen right in front of him and Gollum was bugging him and, you know, Samwise was by his side. And there's just so much beauty in that. But so look at the story of Jesus. When he says, let us go to the other side. I was like, wow, <laughs> it's like, oh, I have this bracelet. Look, I'll give you the secret of my bracelet. It says, Lo, I am with you always, right? And so I look down all the time and I see I, I, he's with me. Like God, divine love, if you think of it as Christ or understand it as creator, as divine love, divine love is always with you, always wants to be with you. We can push divine love aside, but let us go. Let us go together to the other side. And um, I have to wrap this up because I have a meeting and I don't want to be late. But in the boat, right, when they're in the boat with the disciples, uh, uh, Jesus goes to sleep and a storm comes and the waters come and it says they were in jeopardy and it looks like they were and perhaps they would have been in the boat, but it doesn't matter. They went and woke up Jesus and they said, we're perishing and he calmed the wind and he calmed the waters and he said, where is your faith, you know? And it's like, they wouldn't perish if he said, let us go to the other side. And so for me, God was speaking in my heart and I wanted so much to give it to you. Like, let us, we're going together. We'll get to the other side of this. Just keep persevering, keep walking in faith, keep taking the highest path, keep, keep walking in love, keep learning what love is, keep learning what wisdom is, seek wisdom, seek the highest good, seek, um, oh, the flame. that's awesome. Um, and so, um, hi. Oh no, no, it's great. Like, play. I'm just making a YouTube video. I am so sorry to you. No, don't be sorry. This is all important. It's all, I always trust that everything happens for the part of it. You know what I mean? No, 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 I have to go back. But it's, it's, I'm talking about how we all have to be like little kids to like see the higher things. You know what I mean? It's perfect. I know, right? And, and present, really present, you know? And really present to the moment. Like kids are really present to the moment. Yeah. That's what we need to remember. I know. Take care. Oh, she was saying she was sorry. And and she can make the kids wait. I'm like, no, the kids, just like I said, like Jesus manifested everything that he needed to in that moment. You see, like I just trust that life will keep bringing this to us. You know, whatever is most beautiful in the moment. You know, I don't know where my camera was for that, but I'm not editing it out. I just don't put it on kids, you know, because I don't have permission or whatever if I haven't talked to them first. But anyway, um, it was showing me that all of life, no matter if someone like falls into, you know, temptation because you're watching too much YouTube or, um, you know, watching too many spiritual things or something to try to get a spiritual high or you're drinking yourself silly you know it's like those are just storms and the wind and I'm not minimizing either but I'm saying like we can learn how to not judge people and how to be present and loving and not judge ourselves but know that Christ came and if you understand it as a Christ consciousness I don't judge anyone like it, it is that and more you know but Christ came to still this and to go with us in this and to equip us. And so I wish you so much love. Thanks so much for being here. Um, share this video and subscribe and comment. Um, put what resonated most for you or whatever you'd like to comment so that this channel can grow. I'd, I'd like to consciously grow this channel so more people can get what I'm spending my time and discipline to give to you guys. Much love.